Hey everybody, welcome to today's live stream. Hope everybody's doing good today. So today we're gonna do some casting of some of the 3D prints that I've been making. Uh, one of the things that I've been trying to uh, kind of dial in is, is honeycomb. Uh, some people have difficulty turning the aluminum ones and so I wanted to kind of use, that's actually one of the big reasons I bought a 3D printer was to uh, make some of the honeycomb blanks uh, with it. The other nice thing is I don't have to worry about my saw stop break uh, tripping, uh, not you know cutting the aluminum. So it'll be kind of nice in that sense as well. But I need to dial in the settings, figure out which resin works best, which one prints best, as well as turns the best. So we got a, a batch of things to cast. Uh, I apologize for being a little bit late and then also for the early time. I have to take my wife to the airport, which is an hour away from our house. Um, this afternoon and so had to kind of leave early. It's kind of a hectic day and I wasn't actually sure when I would actually be ready to stream. I had to do physical therapy and get a bunch of work done. So I just picked 215 and eh, about five or ten minutes late. But you know, I mean if there's one thing that you guys can definitely count on with me, I'm gonna be late to my own stream. So anyway, I hope like I said everybody's doing good today. Uh, it's gonna be kind of quick. We're just gonna kind of run through this, do some casting and then I'm, I got to get out of here. But um, I'm looking forward to this, so I hope you guys are too. So let's switch to the overhead cam, show you what I have here. Look at this craziness. We got some, I thought we'd do some black honeycomb. I thought that would be kind of a cool one. Um, so this is all one resin over here. We have some silver ones. I actually managed to make some silver sparkly kind of cool ones. This would be a really good replacement for aluminum. Um, this one's actually made with a different resin than these three. And then this one's kind of a blue, uh, but uh, again, a different resin. So that's what we got. We're going to do two batches. Um, with the black ones, I'm going for like a honeycomb, you know, or like the a honey look. Um, I've already done some tests. I think I showed you guys before. Um, I already did a couple little tests and, and got these blanks. Um, I, I kind of like this one. This is a solid color dye, and I like this one. I think this one is a little bit too kind of golden for my taste. I think this looks a little bit better possibly. I don't know. We're going to go with the, go the that color again, I think. I, I didn't really, uh, you know, obviously polish those, so not entirely certain. But anyway, that's what we're going to cast today. Uh, I thought it'd be kind of cool to do black and silver. Um, that would be kind of a neat one. I, I'm not going to have people pick colors because it takes a little bit more time and I just don't have enough time today to, to go through all that. But um, I thought we'd do a couple with black and then a few with the, the blurple on the silver ones. And then with the, the black ones, we're going to do a couple different things here. We're going to do a little bit of goldenrod mica powder. And then I actually got, I just ordered some stuff from Divine Pigments and they got a new liquid metal called yellow gold. And I thought, okay, <laughs> let's try that out and see what we got going with that. Who knows? Uh, one other thing I really wanted to share with you guys is what we got for results. Uh, we did these coasters on the Patreon Hangout. And so we got some pretty cool results. I need to talk to um, uh, Philip about the molds that I used. Um, there's, I got a little bit of seepage and I probably did things not exactly right. Um, so like on the second and third pours, like I got a little bit of seepage from the other uh, areas. So the question is, how do you get all these little mold things out of there? But I really love this one. That one is just so cool. Such a neat looking thing. I'm, I'm probably going to fill in. There's like a little bit of a lip here. Probably pour some clear on the top of that just to fill it in. I really love this one too. Just really cool stuff. And then this little moon one here. Let's see. Let's kind of do it that. I kind of got a little bit <laughs> overzealous with the star when I was pouring that. But it looks good on the back. See, there's a little bit of flashing from the gold on the bottom. So need to figure out a way to clean that up. I could sand this, but I'm probably not going to do that, if I'm going to be honest. Um, <clears throat> so you can get those guys. I'm going to drop you guys a link. Uh, you can get them from Danner. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Dannerbuilds.com. I don't think Philip's here, is he? I don't think so. So there's a link to that, and you just look at um, look up silicone molds. You'll find so just in case somebody didn't see how these things work, I'm going to give you kind of like a quick quick shot of these. So he sells these these. Uh, this is the four inch round, 
And then you can buy these, I think they're called silicone inserts. And so you can insert these into the molds and make these things. Again, the question is, how do you get these things out um, and then keep your, your first casting? Because you do this in stages, right? So I, you'd pour this part first and then take these guys out after it's cured and then pour the rest. Um, but the question is, how do you get, how do you, there's a fly buzzing me. How do you get these, uh, these pieces out and also not let the resin seep under? So that's a question I need to ask Philip if there's a good strategy for doing that. But overall, really fun to make. And I mean, like, these are the types of things, like, I mean, you could easily sell something like this. Like, this is something that somebody would buy, you know? Say, oh, it's like a, you know, Alpine, you know, coaster set. You could totally sell that to somebody. This one, too. This one's not too bad. Kind of cool sun. This one, I will say, with all these little tiny pieces, these were all individual silicone things. Don't think I'm going to be making that one again. I'm just going to be completely honest because it was a pain getting those things out. But anyway, so that's what's going on there. Um, let's see. So for today, we have some molds. What I'm going to do is I've kind of made these. What, I, what I'm planning with these things is to, to just drop them into a single blank uh, you know, mold type deal. So these fit pretty well. I, I might need to kind of mess around with the, the sizing. Um, and I made some that are smaller just so it would fit on my smaller printer. Um, but basically just drop these guys in and that's all you got to do. Very simple. You pour your resin in, drop them in, and then you're good. Um, so these molds I got at Turner's Warehouse. I love them. They have the, the silicone plugs in the bottom so you can just shoot the air to, to demold. I do recommend hitting it with mold uh, release. I already sprayed these guys. They've been in the oven uh, for quite a while now. So there's a link down in the show notes. Here's a link to these molds if anybody wants to pick these guys up at Turner's Warehouse and that links an affiliate link so you'll be helping support the show uh, if you use that. Always appreciated. I get a little kickback and it costs you guys nothing. Um, it doesn't change your prices or anything like that. Um, I just get a little bit of a percentage back on your on the sales on the orders. So let's do the black ones first. Like I said I'm a little bit pressed for time today so um, we're just gonna jump right in, I think. Uh, I'm gonna switch to the double cam so you can kind of see what I'm doing from over there. And you can see the up closes, up close and personal on the main screen there. Let's see here. So actually, I wanna stop real quick. How long did it take to make them? Um, it all depends. Um, these things mostly, the way that resin 3D printing works, it prints anything that's on a layer all at once. So, these things take maybe about an hour, and it doesn't ma matter if you're printing one or like a whole handful of them. Um, so realistically, it just depends on how tall things, <coughs> excuse me, how tall things are, because those things print maybe an hour, an hour and a half. I could probably even shave that down a little bit um, with kind of trying to speed up things with settings. But something like li this that I'm gonna be, pr I, and I print these standing up um i i'm i still just haven't you know been been uh haven't tried printing them sideways i don't know if it's actually worth it though but um this thing takes like 10 hours you know to print because it's so much taller so it all just depends on you know settings the resin that you're using the height how tall is the thing but with that really tall one, I mean, I can load a ton of them up on the build plate. And so one of those takes 10 hours. And, you know, if I could fit 30 on there, 30 of them would take 10 hours. So that's the beauty of it. All right. So for these black ones, we're going to go with two different types of colors. We're going to try, like I said, this metal, uh, liquid metal. I guess I'll hold it this way so you can see. These are divine pigments. They sent this to me free with my order. Um, so liquid metal, yellow gold. I thought, let's see what this is like. Um, it's basically dye with some uh, like glitter chunks in it. I think is pretty much what that liquid metal is. And I thought we'd use the, the goldenrod from P-Town. That's a pretty good looking color. It should work pretty well for these for honey. I believe it's the lighter one of the, the ones that I showed you, the, the samples I've already made. Um, I'm making more samples because I didn't really love that resin that I used for those other ones. It was kind of when I was turning it, it was a little bit... I don't know what brittle ish. <laughs> I don't know. There was, it, it just wasn't amazing. So, um, I want to try it again with a different type of resin this time. 
All right, so uh, I got I already made notes for these guys. So I, I want to say that each one of these, um, each one of these things takes about 70 grams of resin. I mean, we are going to be adding some material, so I think I should be plenty, um, estimating 70 per per slot. So that's 350 total that we need for one of these guys. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to split those. Like I said, I want I want two totally different colors. I want to see a couple different looks. So three of these or, or two of them or whatever is going to be, um, you know, the goldenrod. And then I think we're going to do a three with goldenrod and then two with the, the liquid metal. Because I'm just not entirely certain what to expect with the liquid metal. I've never seen it before. So that would be kind of fun. All right, let's see here. Yeah, FDM. That's what I like about the resin printing. But, you know, resin's different. It has its own little kind of list of things challenges and <laughs> things it's definitely messy you know and it can be smelly a little bit so there's pluses and minuses with all of these types of things you know all right so i'm going to zero my scale you can see yep you can see what's going on let me see where that yeah that's pretty good okay zeroed the scale out we're going with the lumilite clear slow so i need um 175 part a 175 grams Dang, I need to fill my jugs, of course. Why am I always out of resin? Shoot, I didn't think about that. 175. See if we can, I think we can make it before I have to fill the jugs. 174. Oof, 174.6. There we go, 175.1 or two, somewhere around there, we're good. And then 175 point, uh, part B. There's my arm. Really got to do something about that. Lost count, okay. 172. 4.4, 7, oh man, we're almost there, oh, a little bit more, Let's do a little bit. okay, we are good to go, I'm mix this up, and I'm going to get another cup, like I said, we're going to break this into two, so let me, let me see here, 350, 350 divided by 5, 70, oh yeah, 70 times 2, so we're going to put 140 grams in that cup. I'm going to actually just zero it out right now. And that'll be for our, our Divine Pigments liquid metal. We're going to break this into two things. I, I'm a little bit more interested in the, the mica powder. That's the direction that I kind of want to go on this black honeycomb. Uh, eventually, as long as all the tests and everything's, this is the problem with the 3D printing stuff that I'm doing. Everybody's kind of waiting, I'm sure, for a video. But not only do I need to figure out how to 3D print with these resin printers, <laughs> I need to also test these things to make sure that they actually work for turning blanks. Because, you know, the end goal for me is to make blanks out of them. And, and probably I'll sell the pieces if you want to put your own colors together and cast them. And I'll probably even sell the files if you want to 3D print them. Um, but that all rides on this stuff actually working well. Um, if it doesn't work well, then, I, you know, whatever, I'll just sell the, <laughs> the printer and move on. I'm not worried about that though. I've already turned one thing, it turned great. They cast well. Um, so I'm not particularly worried that it's not gonna work for some reason. Um, but the question is, you know, which resin do you use? Um, and I think that, you know, if, if somebody bought these files, I'm, they should work just fine with an FDM printer too. Just the, the regular, you know, the regular type of printers uh, that you think of for 3D printing the, with the spools. Um, I don't, there shouldn't be any difference. Uh, but I do, I would want to test that first <laughs> before I was selling the files and saying, yeah, it works great. You know. So is anybody watching the Olympics? I love the Winter Olympics. Super stoked that Sean White got into the finals on the half pipe. 
So we're going to actually measure the liquid uh, dye here out uh, by, by weight. That way I can recreate, you know, the effects and know uh, how much it takes. I got to open this thing, I think. Yeah. These things are super messy. So I'm going to, oh, there it goes. Bloop. This time I didn't get it all over my hands, though. That's pretty awesome. Just everywhere else. Okay. Hopefully this will look cool. Like I said, I've never seen this before. Mamie, I appreciate the super chat. Thank you very much. Let's see, I'm not keeping too much of an eye. Yeah, we're using some 3D printed, whoa! Something, <laughs> I gotta turn my volume down, that's gonna scare me. Scared the bejesus out of me. Get a little notification, I don't know if you guys heard that or not. Okay, so, and I, I estimated, I'm gonna put in approximately two per, well, I'm going to put in, I'm not even going to tell you percentages. It's just going to be two grams is going into 140 total grams here. So two grams. It just, it gets confusing because I actually look at it based on a percentage of half the resin. So that's a different number, different percent than if you were doing it by the total amount in the cup. So I think it's easier for me just to tell you how much resin's in the cup and how much dye I'm putting in and that will tell you exactly what the percentage is. I don't know, that's eh. okay. We'll see how this turns out. There it is a little sparkly in there though. I don't know if you guys it's it's kind of hard to tell. Uh, there's a little bit of kind of a glitter, you know, a little sparkle effect in there. That's kind of cool. I actually I think these are going to look kind of neat. I think it's going to be fairly similar to the the solid color uh, that I've already poured. I didn't use this for that though. I made my own kind of dye color. And then I'm pretty sure this goldenrod is the one that I used. Uh, for some reason, I can't find my notes. <laughs> I always tell you guys to take really good notes so you can recreate it. And then I lost my notes. Or, or I didn't take notes. I'm not sure. That's kind of odd though. I don't usually not take notes. So these are pretty. Pretty close colors there. That's interesting. Okay, so we're mixing it up. You always want to make sure when you're mixing your resin that you uh, mix it well. Um, scrape the bottom and the sides of the cup. Always, you want to make sure there's no film of just part A or part B, um, you know, kind of clinging to the side, because if it doesn't get mixed together, two problems actually, there's, there's two issues. One, you could have clumps of just part A, which is not going to cure, you know, in your mold. Uh, or part B, you know, whichever one ends up in there. If it's not fully mixed, you're just going to have this blob of, of goo, basically, in the end. And all the other resin is going to cure around it. So that's one issue. The other problem is it could actually, depending, it could actually throw your ratio off. Um, it's kind of unlikely, uh, you know, but, I mean, depends on how much resin we're talking about here and everything. Um, especially if you're mixing just a small amount up. If you don't really get the sides and bottom scraped, it could easily throw your ratio off and, and the whole thing may not really cure right. So always important to do that. Make sure you scrape and do all that kind of good stuff. This mold is hot. It's hot, hot, hot. Why is it so hot? Jeez. Okay, so I think we're going to probably be a little bit over on how much resin we need, but that's okay. So what I'm doing, I like pouring the stuff in first. Uh, you can maybe get away with pouring it in after, you know, stick the honeycomb piece in and then and then pour on it. But the issue I have with doing it that way, if you can get, if you can avoid it, um, the issue I have is you can trap air. You know, you're 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 shoving, you're dumping resin down a tube, and it could create an air pocket possibly kind of unlikely, but at the same time, I don't like taking chances with that kind of thing. Especially if you're doing one color, there's absolutely no reason why you can't just pour it in and then plop the thing in, you know? If you're doing multiple colors, uh, you actually get a decent little mix. 
when you drop that in, you can, you can pour your colors, swirl them up, and then, um, and then drop your honeycomb in, and it'll kind of create some really interesting, uh, you know, like uh, patterns, let's say. Um, it'll kind of mix those, those swirls a little bit and be kind of cool looking, I, I find. However, if you don't want it to be mixed up at all, then you're gonna have to stick the honeycomb piece in, or you know, whatever it may be, stick that in the mold, and then um, you know, pour your resin on. So you can do it either way, um, but I always lean towards being safe on uh, on the side of safety with air bubbles. I don't like air pockets because the issue with air pockets, if it's just a void where there's no air, or I mean, no resin, the pressure pot's really not gonna fix that. Um, it deals with air bubbles it collapses a bubble form, not a pocket. It's not gonna do anything to missing resin. So just top those guys off. Gonna top this guy off. There it goes. Okay, so look at that. I'm just gonna kinda make sure that those, those little honeycombs are at the bottom there on each one of these. Okay, so we got one done. I'm looking forward to seeing how these guys turn. Hoping that this resin's a little bit better to turn, but I still have lots of options out there. There's so many different, you know, resin choices, all with different specs and everything. It's kind of like resin casting type stuff, you know, there's, some of them are brittle, some of them are hard, and some of them are flexible. You know, there's all kinds of different types of things, and you can even mix them. Here's one, one interesting thing that's a little bit different than the world of just resin casting, casting resins. Um, one thing that's pretty interesting about some of these resins is, so, you know, it, we're not mixing part A and part B in, in resin printing. It's just resin. It's, it's much more like... Uh, when I made the ring, it's just UV resin basically where, you know, you shine light on it um, and the UV rays cure it. So there's no, no mixing or doing any of that stuff. Um, but one of the interesting things about these resins, and sometimes you may have to stick within the same like manufacturer, but you can actually mix together resins that have slightly different properties. So let's say you had a, a really brittle, but maybe it was cheap resin you know, so let's say you got this bottle and then you could find something that's flexible and then mix them at different percentages and maybe dial in the perfect, um, you know, hardness level or flexibility uh, type thing. Um, and again, cheapness uh, or, or, or price tag possibly. So use kind of the majority of it is, is like super cheap resin and then stick some, you know, slightly better flexible um, resin in there that, that will slightly change the properties of the end result. It's just kind of mind-boggling like when you really get into this stuff There's so many options of things that you can do with resin 3d printing um, So I'm pretty stoked and, and like I said lots of videos are coming down the road um, but the problem is like You know, we were talking about print times and I only have so many hours in the day to, to be printing and doing all this stuff And I have other things, you know, this is kind of in addition to everything I was doing before so the problem is the turnover of like testing is pretty slow. Um, so, and I want to know the answers before I make a video, not just be like, I tried this and I don't know, you know. Uh, so it's going to take a little bit of time, but we will get it rolling and it should be pretty fun. Go Team Canada. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Well, the... Yeah, but they, the, you can watch the, the Olympic, you know, different things. You can watch it d at different times. It doesn't have, you don't have to watch it live. Um, we've been watching, uh, one thing that's cool, if anybody really is interested in very specific events or whatever really cares about the Olympics, if you pay for the Peacock app, um, we're just going to pay for like a month of it, uh, you can literally watch any event like all the way through. So if you really like, you know, certain hockey matchups or, if you're just a, a super fan of the Norwegian curling team and want to see every one of their, uh, uh, you know, events, um, you can pay for that and then just watch that event whenever you want. Um, just make sure not to look at social media and find, you know, what the, who won and all that stuff. 
stop eating resin. Mmm. Burritos. We might have uh, Mexican food tonight. Okay, so I don't think I've missed any questions. Like I said, kind of on the, kind of running a little bit behind on time today. I got a, a very important drive my wife to the airport to, to this afternoon, and so I cannot be late. And unfortunately, I had to drive into the shop 30 minutes, and then I got to drive home 30 minutes, and then we got to drive to Reno an hour. It's just, it didn't work. <laughs> This is going to be a lot of driving today. Okay, so the next round, what we're going to do is the silver ones, which I'm super excited about. So just to let you guys know, another really awesome thing about resin 3D printing is you can tint the resin yourself with the same things that we use for resin casting. Pretty sweet, right? Um, there is some limitations, I think, to that. Um, and I'm doing, again, I'm doing lots of experimenting with this stuff, but... You can already tell, I'm sure, that I'm getting perfectly fine results. I created this. This was made with clear resin, and it's silver. Um, so a couple different things that you can do with tinting the resin. I'm super excited about this stuff, though. It's just so fun. Um, all right, so let's go down to the double cam. So on this one, we're going to do... Um, I want to do some... So, okay, so I need to figure out what's going on here. So... This one is a test. This one's a, a different test. And then these three are the same resins. All right. So what I want to do is I want to do some black with the silver, black resin with silver. And it's going to be weird the way that I line this up, but basically these two slots are going to be black. I wanted to separate these two. Well, I wanted to separate these from this one because they're different resins and I want to be able to test the turning and know which blank is which. So we're going to do two slots of black, and then the other three are going to be blurple. Uh, my, my color shift blue to purple color shift powder with some purple dye. All right, so th two blacks, three blurples. Um, I actually went a little... Let's see here, i got to write a note down real quick. I kind of changed how much resin uh, I wasn't thinking about it. I, I divided my numbers into, I just split it in half and that's not going to work. There's five slots, not six. <laughs> so needed to make sure I had that little note ready. All right. So we're zeroing the scale out. Oh, I need to fill some resin up. Hold on. And I'm not in the mood to have to fill these jugs up. Running short on time, guys. Why is why is the resin always empty when you're running out of time? All right, so hold quick while I fill my... So what I do is I order this stuff 10 gallons at a time, and then I, uh, uh, I fill... I just fill these jugs up. Oh, we got part A. Part A, make sure I'm putting the right resin in the right jug. So I'm a little bit behind off screen here, and I just keep my, my 10 gallon kits. My, they call them 80 pound kit for Illumilite Clear, but it's 10 gallons, about five gallons of A, five gallons of B. And so I just kind of keep refilling my gallon jugs to make it so I don't have 10 gallons of resin sitting on my counter all the time. That would kind of be a pain. And then what I do, just to let anybody know, if, if for anybody that's, that's like, you know, going at this kind of pace on resin, you're selling blanks or, or thinking about doing that down the road. Um, one tip that I have is, I, and, and what I do is, so, I, you know, I'm using these gallon jugs and I just keep, you know, reusing them. I don't buy another like two gallon kit. Um, I just use the same bottles. But what I do is I don't recommend just, going forever um, just refilling that jug um, the part a is not really a problem with resin um, it doesn't really typically or, or I, I should say the resin part some companies call part a call the hardener part a 
Um, so the resin part of your casting resins, usually that stuff's pretty benign and it, and it can kind of last forever. Um, it's not really going to like run out, uh, you know, of, of, it has a longer shelf life and it just doesn't, isn't, isn't as susceptible to issues. The hardener is usually what kind of thickens up, hardens, you get little crusties on the jug. Um, and so either way though, what I recommend is, and, and what I do is when I empty a 10 gallon kit, I also clean out really well, um, wash out the, the two jugs, uh, the two gallon jugs with um, acetone. All right, and that way I'm opening a brand new jug and I got a nice clean, you know, gallon that it's getting poured into. Because um, it was interesting, I was actually talking to Casey on one of our podcasts and he's like, oh, yeah, I end up with this big hunk of like resin on the bottom of my part B. <laughs> I was like, you don't clean it. So that's what can happen is, you know, you can kind of get some crystallization in the bottom and over time, which that was probably years, but over time you end up with less space even in your jug. And that's old part B in the bottom too, which it's just not, you know, advisable. could cause some issues with your castings if you're using super old resin or parts of that can can get into your resin oh almost fall over all right so we're almost done it takes a little while to fill a gallon jug so everybody just talk amongst yourselves So is, that, is anybody familiar with or watch the channel Kyle Hill? He's like a science communicator guy. I learned on his channel, on his live, he had his live stream. Um, I learned that the snow, because you know, all the snow in Beijing is for the Olympics is man-made. That stuff is made with like bacteria. It's like a totally different process than what like I'm used to up in Tahoe where they, you know, we making snow is not new to me. Um, they make snow all the time up here, but it's basically just water shot out of a cannon. And the interesting thing is you have to have specific temperatures and dew points for all that to work. But this other process with this bacteria stuff, I guess it's actually the protein around the bacteria that they use. Um, it can create snow balls, snowflakes, um, at a higher temperature, which is quite interesting. I learned something new. All right, so I've zeroed the scale out. We need 175 grams of part A. Anybody have any questions there? Frank's here, what's up, man? Yeah, I had to start early and then I was late. I know, I'm, <laughs> Kim hates it when I'm late. <laughs> uh. I can't help it. It's just what I do. You know, the, the reason why is because I'm always trying to fit in. Well, in this case, it just didn't work out. But um, what am I doing? 175. Um, I'm, I always try to fit things because I'm always late going home. And Gretchen hates me for that. But whatever. Um, I always try to fit. You know, oh, I, can, I got enough time for one more thing. Oh, we did a little bit. 176. No big deal. We'll just put 176 of part B in. Watch out, scale. Okay, one seventy, one sixty three, one for one seventy six here, one seventy three. Ooh, so close. Okay, that ought to be good. Get a stick here. And again, I'm gonna get a cup ready. Get the cup ready. Because we're gonna dump off 140 grams into that. That'll be used for two blanks. 
So I was very accurate with my measurements. So these, these are the, the that mold is the seven eighths um, width uh, mold, and so they uh, they take seventy grams. I would say, maybe even you could maybe even say seventy. I would say seventy. Seventy grams is perfect for those things. I always I never know. I wish they would just like print those on the mold or you know, I don't know somehow <laughs> carve that into the side. Let the CNC seventy grams per thing all right so we got our resin here mixing it well look at that looking good i'm gonna dump 140 into this guy Spot on. Oh, 104. Oh, it went down 140 on the dot. Okay, so we're going to add some black dye to this one. I'm going to put in two grams in this one again. So 140 grams of resin, two grams of dye. There should be plenty to make it dark or opaque, I should say. Okay, so we got two grams in there. Give me another stick for that. Stir it in. And then we're going to do my, my favorite blurple uh, mix with the other, uh, the remainder of this stuff. I don't know how this is going to look with that blue blank. This, is, this one's actually like a navy blue resin. We'll have to see. That may not be the most amazing thing on the planet, but it doesn't really matter what it looks like in, right now. I just need to get some resin in there, turn these different things up, and see which ones turn the best. That's the, the point. The printing so far is going well. Um, I haven't really run into too many issues with, with printing at all. Um, it all prints pretty well using fairly standard settings. So that's good news. Um, real quick, I'm going to go grab myself a link. For anybody, we're going to be doing my Blurple mix. So I want to show you where you get the Blurple. Um, it's using the my color shift powder. This I started selling this. A lot of people ask, like, uh, you know, are, do you have other colors of, of color shift powder? And the thing is, this one is the one that, that I, I just, this works for, for the things that I want. And that's why I decided to buy it in kind of bulk and then resell it. So it's just, it's a color shift powder, a really good one. We are going to add two drops of, maybe even three. We'll go three, uh, no, two drops. Two drops of, this is just the violet alumilite dye, purple. Mix that in. Um, color shift powders kind of require, they don't, well, to really pop the colors out, for, for the color to really stand out, they need a dark background. So this purple dye is just perfect. Um, and it's also a blue to purple color shift, so it just kind of works quite well with everything. And so what I'm going to do is we're going to put a quarter teaspoon of my, my blue to purple color shift powder in there. And so depending on how the light hits it, the, the, the colors kind of shift on you. Um, one way it kind of looks more blue, one way it looks kind of more purple or violet. I would say purple. Pretty cool stuff. It's a really interesting effect. That's why, like I said, that's why when I found this and kind of started getting cool results with it, I was like, I think I'm going to buy that in bulk and sell it to other people. Now, without dye, you can also get some really awesome kind of uh, aurora effects. So it works, there, it, it works differently, but you get some cool effects without putting any dye or, or, or dark background in there too. Um, and I have a video on, on that, how to get a kind of Aurora effects. And that also uses my starlight glitter. All right, so we got our resins mixed. And like I said, the blurple is available on my website with that link. Well as my starlight glitters. 
stocked up right now. Okay, so now the way that I have these things lined up, I wanna do this the way that I want. So these two are gonna be black just because I want, I, I want this separation there. So we're going with black. And black this one's a little bit shorter than the other ones so that'll also kind of help me out not gonna not really gonna make any difference um, for me for like turning or anything but oh I love the, that color that is so good we got a little bit of blurple going on here. Now, again, you can color, you can mix all these things together and do all that. I, I just, it doesn't really matter um, to me for these tests. We can kind of get into that down the road sometime a little bit more. Okay. And then this one is going in between those two to kind of separate those two blanks. The one that's on its own is a resin that is unlike all the rest. Basically, it's a different resin than the rest of them. Oh, I love watching them go in and, and submerge. It's so much fun. Oh man, it's so cool. You can see like little bands of purple and blue when those things drop in there. It's not gonna stay that way, but it's it's just cool looking. Okay, so we can maybe add a little bit of black. I don't think we even need to really, but we can add a little black there. I did, I filled them up pretty close to the top on the other ones though. So that's, that's all we gotta do. Black and purple. I think that purple with the silver, ah. What do you guys think? I think that's gonna be cool. And, and black and silver, uh, I'm kind of a Raiders fan. So that's why that kind of, oh man, that's pretty close. So I, I think I'm gonna use my little, a little doohickey thing here. I think it'll be easier for me to get this in the pressure pot without spilling it everywhere. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that just kind of makes things a little easier. I, I kind of, I would recommend if you're going to be using a pressure pot, it's, it's really not a, it's a good idea. Let's say, I'm not going to even say it's not a bad idea. I think it's a good idea to use a, a little tray thing. If you're making like pin blanks, like that kind of stuff. I think it's just a, a pretty good way to do it. The reason I don't do that is because I'm so used to, you know, when I'm using a Lumalite white resin, that stuff is so fast that I don't have time to be messing with a carrier, a little rack thing. Um, I got to get it poured and throw it, like <laughs> slam it down in the pressure pot. So I just kind of do that all the time um, normally. But I think for most people, it's, it's a pretty good idea. And it's so simple. You can just build. I mean, I, I made this by hand. And it's like nothing. I mean, <laughs> there's really nothing going on here. It's particle board. Um, you can use HDPE if you wanted, um, but even just wood, you know, maybe spray it with something. Um, melamine is fairly, uh, it's not, I wouldn't say that it's totally non-stick, but it generally doesn't really fully stick. Now the particle board, obviously I'm never getting that off, but um, if you get spills here and there, whatever, but, um, very simple to, I mean, all I did was just glue and brad nail these things together, screwed those on the top. Pretty simple design. I mean, it takes, you know, easily, easily a weekend, probably an afternoon type project. Blue and silver for the win. Wait, let's see here. So back to this view so like i said i gotta i gotta get rolling today so the reason we did the for anybody that didn't see the earlier what the what the reasoning was i gotta take my wife to the the airport which means first i gotta go home then we gotta go all the way back to reno an hour drive it's crazy today so i'm 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 started early and we're just doing kind of a quick one today but i'm super excited i can't wait to see how these things turn out um 
Might turn one on the stream next week, actually. I think that might be a really good idea uh, to share that. I may turn one or two beforehand just because there's a week, <laughs> you know, in between then. Uh, and I need to kind of, it, it'll help me to kind of get going on this stuff. But I think it'll be pretty fun to turn something that we've made today. Um, really cool stuff, though. So eventually we're going to be, I'll, I'll be rolling out some new pen blanks on my website once I kind of nail down, you know, some of the testing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, nail down some some colors that I want to add uh, and then I'll also be you know just printing out some honeycombs and selling those I don't know exactly how that's all going to work but down the road you know if you want to just pick up honeycomb and cast it yourself with whatever colors um, I'll have that available and if you are looking to get into resin 3d printing I'm going to be selling the files uh, as well so that you could print your own so I'm going to throw a link in the description and in, in the, the chat window right here. Um, if anybody's seriously considering getting into resin 3D printing, that's a link to the, the Elegoo Saturn that I bought. I have bought a smaller one and it's cheaper um, and it's not bad. There's nothing wrong with it, but I'll tell you what, the Saturn, I like that thing a lot better. Um, it just is more consistent. It just seems more solid. It's actually a dual rail um, for the Z axis. I think it works better, frankly. I think it's a better um, value. Um, so if you're very serious, um, it's not a cheap one. It's about 500 bucks. Um, so it would be, have to be somebody that's kind of serious, a little bit more serious about resin 3D printing. Um, but on the flip side, there's also, the other one that I bought was the Elegoo, uh, the, the Elegoo Mars uh, 2 Pro. That's not a bad one either. It's got a really good LCD screen. It's, it's a very high quality, printer um, and i think that if you're going to go for one of the smaller ones unless you're going super cheap i think that's probably the other one to get that's obviously why i bought that one there's other brands out there i'm not i don't know anything about other brands um, so far pretty happy with elegoo and they got pretty good support uh, as well you know facebook groups and and stuff like that so anyway links check that all out and and have some fun with it i think it'll be pretty cool so i know that i'm having fun it's it's like it's a little bit of time consuming you know up front but i think once kind of i dial down um, you know you dial in like which resin you're going to use for which types of things then it's just a matter of hit print make some more and, and kind of batch them out so pretty cool stuff so anyway guys i appreciate uh to, to mamie thank you for for the super chat i really appreciate that if you guys want to help support the show you can do so through patreon or the super chat always appreciate it not necessary uh don't forget to hit the like button um that's a free way to to really support the show i mean it, it really goes a long way so make sure to do that don't forget to subscribe and I think that's about all, guys. So uh, next week, we'll probably turn one of those blanks up into a pen, see how they turn. And it should be pretty pretty, uh, pretty awesome, I think. I think it'll be pretty cool to, to share that uh, and do one on, on the live stream. So anyway, guys, have a wonderful evening, and I will see you guys on the next stream.